how does regenerative medicine work today? How do you hope it works? What's the hope there? Yeah. How, yeah. How, how do you make it happen? Well, today there's a set of popular approaches. So, so one is 3D printing. So the idea is I'm, I'm going to make a scaffold of the thing that I want. I'm going to seed it with cells and then, and then there it is, right? So kind of direct, and then that works for certain things. You can make a bladder that way or, or an ear or something like that. Um, the other, the other idea is, is uh, some sort of stem cell transplant. The, the idea is if we, uh, if we put in stem cells with appropriate factors, we can get them to generate certain kinds of neurons for certain you know, diseases and so on. All of those things are good for relatively simple structures. But when you want an eye or a hand or something else, I think, and this may be an unpopular opinion, I think the only hope we have in any reasonable kind of time frame is to uh, understand how the thing was motivated to get made in the first place. So what is it that, that made those cells in the, in the beginning create a particular arm with a particular uh, set of uh, sizes and shapes and number of fingers and all that? And why is it that a salamander can keep losing theirs and keep regrowing theirs and a planarian can do the same, even more so? To me, uh, kind of ultimate regenerative medicine was when you can tell the cells to build whatever it is you need them to build. Right. And so the, so that we can all be like planaria, basically. Do you have to start at the very beginning or can you um, do a shortcut? Because if you're growing a hand, you already got the whole organism. Yeah. So here's what we've done, right? So so we've we've more or less solved that in frogs. So frogs, unlike salamanders, do not regenerate their legs as adults. And so, so uh, we've shown that with a very... Um, uh, kind of simple intervention. So what we do is there, there's two things. You need to uh, you need to have a signal that tells the cells what to do, and then you need some way of delivering it. And so this is work together with um, with David Kaplan, and I should do a, um, a disclosure here. We have a company called Morphoceuticals, and it's a spinoff, where we're trying to uh, to address uh, uh, regenerate, you know, limb regeneration. So we've solved it in the frog, and we're now in uh, trials in mice. So now we're going to, solved. we're in mammals now, and so I can't say anything about how it's going, but the frog thing is solved. So what you do is um, after- so you can have a little frog Luke Skywalker with a regrowing hand. Yeah, basically. Basically, yeah, yeah. So what you do is we did we did it with legs instead of forearms, and what you do is um, after amputation, normally they they don't regenerate. You put on a wearable bioreactor, so it's this thing that um, that goes on, and uh, Dave Kaplan's lab makes these things. And inside, it's a it's a very controlled um, environment. It is a silk gel that carries uh, some drugs, for example, ion channel drugs. And what you're doing is you're saying to these cells, you should regrow what normally goes here. So. Uh, that whole thing is on for 24 hours. Then you take it off. You don't touch the leg again. This is really important because what we're not looking for is a set of micromanagement, uh, you know, printing or controlling the cells. We want to trigger. We want to. We want to interact with it early on and then not touch it again because because we don't know how to make a frog leg, but the frog knows how to make a frog leg. So 24 hours, 18 months of leg growth after that without us touching it again. And after 18 months, you get a pretty good leg. That kind of uh, shows this proof of concept that early on when the cells, right after injury, when they're first making a decision about what they're going to do, you can you can impact them. And once they've decided to make a leg, they don't need you after that. They can you know do their own thing. 